What's going on everyone? My name is That Camping Guy. I'm a Twitch partner that streams mostly sim games such as Farm and Sim and American Truck Sim. I'm partnered with Giant Software, who are the developers of Farm and Sim, as well as with G Portal, who supply dedicated servers for countless games. Today's video is sponsored by G Portal, and we're going to cover the basics of starting a new Farming Sim 22 multiplayer server. We'll discuss ordering and setting up your G Portal game cloud, as well as how to use the Farming Sim dedicated server website. Please note that the progress bar is segmented into chapters at the bottom of the screen so you can read the chapter title and skip to what you need. A list of chapters is also in the description area. Please visit GPortal's wiki and forum websites linked in the description for a knowledge base concerning all things GPortal. The starting point for the tutorial assumes that you have already purchased Pharmasim 22 for your preferred gaming platform. Feel free to use my giant software affiliate links in the description below the video if you've not already bought a copy of FS22. That's it for the intro, let's get started with step one. Step 1. Ordering a Server GPortal's made a special deal that allows me to offer a 10% discount on every new server instead of the usual 5%. To claim this discount, all you have to do is click my Farming Sim 22 GPortal partner link in the description below. Doing so will take you to the GPortal FS22 server order page and apply the discount automatically. Here we are on the FS22 server order page. The max slot, or player count, is 16 per server for all Farm and Sim games. You can select one of the slot options by choosing a server location and then clicking Order Now or you can choose order now under the create your own configuration section. Regardless of your decision, all selections will take you to the same page so you can customize your order. The order page here allows you to fine tune your server requirements. You can also see that the discount is applied in the top right corner. Please note that you can change your slot count and duration at any time from your game cloud dashboard after you've ordered your server. Now go ahead and choose a server host city close to your home and then click continue. Now you need to complete the register page. Choose one of the registration methods or type in your info in the blanks and then click register for free. The final steps of the ordering process is to choose your payment method. Once done, click order. Everything is now complete and you should be on your game cloud dashboard. On to step two. Step two, bring your server online. You now have a shiny new server, congrats. First things first though, you need to turn it on. Go ahead and click the FS22 picture. This page is your server status page. At the top of the screen, you can see the gray offline button. Simply click this button to turn on your server. After a few moments, your page will refresh and you will get a few new options. Most importantly, you will get the web interface button and next to that is the mod space view bar, which shows you how much mod space you have available to your server. The default mod space is only one gigabyte, which isn't very much if you plan on using many mods. The great news is that it's quite cheap to add more mod space. Just click the get more mod space button, choose the next highest option and click order. Now we need to go check out the FS22 dedicated server configuration page. Just click the Farming Simulator web interface button to begin. Warning! Your server is not officially online yet. You must follow the directions outlined in the next step in order for your server to show up in the in-game server browser. Failing to do so will lead to mass confusion between you and your friends as to why your server cannot be found. Step three, configuring your FS22 server. Let's burn through this part, shall we? The first page we see here is the home page. Set your server name here. This will be what appears in the in-game server browser. The admin password will allow you to log in as the in-game administrator. The game password, if set, is required when a player attempts to log into your server. This is always recommended. You have 20 save game slots to choose from, which is helpful if you rotate maps often on your server. The map empty save game is used if you're not uploading a save game from your computer. If you have not uploaded a save, then whatever map you choose here will be what is played on the server. Like the map selection, the career mode selection only applies to a new save. Please note, the farm manager and start from scratch option start you with only money and no land or equipment. If you want to start the game with land and equipment, you will need to start an offline single player save game as a new farmer and then upload that game save to the server. We'll talk about uploading your save game in a little bit. Continuing on, the slot selection is controlled by the G Portal Game Cloud dashboard. It defaults to your max slot count. The game language is self-explanatory. Choose yours. The save interval is set for three hours. It's been my experience that 30 minutes is preferred due to what we should call mishap. 216 miles an hour. Oh, coming in hot, Cyrusy! <laughs> Ignore the web API interval. I recommend making sure the pause game if empty is set to instantly, otherwise your crops will continue to grow without you being online. The crossplay allowed checkbox lets PC, Xbox, and PlayStation all play together. With some restrictions noted in the next section. To wrap things up, if you do not want to upload a save game and you do not want to use any mods, just click save at the bottom of the screen and then start. You will notice the icon at the top of the screen changes from a red offline to a green online. After a few minutes, your server will show up in the in-game server browser as seen here. 
You and your friends are now ready to play together. Just tell your friends the server name and give them a password if you added one. Up next, we'll talk about the crossplay requirements. Crossplay. The short answer for crossplay is this. PC is the master race, of course, and can play with anyone on any server with no restrictions whatsoever. Consoles can play with PC as long as any mods that are used come from the in-game DLC mod section and the in-game slot count is not exceeded. This applies to cross-console play as well. Per the Farm Sim webpage, if a server has already more slots occupied than supported by your platform, joining the server won't be possible. Now on to uploading your save game. The starting point for this section is that you have already put some time into an offline map that you want to upload to a dedicated server for you and your friends to play. This is helpful because you cannot start a fresh server with tractors and property from the FS22 dedicated server configuration page. It can only be done by uploading an offline save. First, you need to navigate to your game save file. Assuming that you have not changed your default save location, open up your Windows Explorer, then click on Documents, My Games, and then Farming Simulator 2022. Save Game 1 is the save in the first slot of your career selection. Save Game 2 is the second slot, so on and so forth. Now you need to create a compressed zip folder of the contents of your save game. To do so, highlight all the files in your folder by hitting Control A. Then right click on any of the highlighted files and click Send To, and then Compressed Zip Folder. Feel free to rename your file if you wish. Now we need to access the FS22 dedicated server configuration page. Sign into your gPortal account, click on your FS22 server, and then click the FS22 web interface button. Make sure your server is not running by clicking stop at the bottom of the home page here. The server status icon should change from a green online image to a red offline image. Now click the save games menu at the top. Choose which save slot you want your save game to use, then click choose file. Navigate to the zip save game file you created earlier, select it and choose open, then click upload. Now go back to your home page and change the save game slot to whatever you chose earlier. In our example here, we need to change the slot to number two. All that is left is to click the save button at the bottom and then click the start button. As mentioned earlier in the video, after a few minutes, your server will show up in the in-game server browser as seen here. You and your friends are now ready to play together. Up next, we will talk about uploading and managing mods. One of the greatest parts of farming sim is its support of mods, but in the words of Uncle Ben, with great power comes great responsibility. Please know that downloading mods that are not from the official in-game DLC section can result in instability, crashing, and possibly your entire save game being corrupt. The preferred method is to download mods from the in-game downloadable content section and upload them to your dedicated server from your local save file. To start, go to the DLC section of FS22. This is the best place to find new mods since they are tested and approved by Giant Software. Just find a mod that you'd like to use and click install. Now let's navigate to where it is stored on your computer. Open your Windows Explorer, then click on Documents, My Games, and then Farming Simulator 2022. Open the Mods folder. It's easy to tell which mod I downloaded since at the time of recording, FS22 has been out barely a week and I have not downloaded many mods. Now we need to minimize this window and open your gPortal account. Go ahead and log in, choose your FS22 server, click on the Farming Sim web interface button to open the FS22 dedicated server configuration page. Make sure the server is not running by clicking Stop at the bottom of the home page here. The server status icon should change from a green online image to a red offline image. Now click on the mods tab at the top. All uploaded mods will be listed at the top of the screen. Official giant software DLC will always be listed and cannot be removed. Here you can see how much mod space you have available. As mentioned in step two, you are defaulted to one gigabyte of mod space, but can easily and cheaply increase this amount. See step two, bring your server online for more information. It's worth mentioning that you can also add mods by simply clicking the download arrow on the right side of the new mods section. Once clicked, your new mod will start to download as seen here. However, downloading mods from the server page has a massive drawback. There is no search bar and none of the mods have a description, so you're at the mercy of the sort bar here. Let's get back to uploading your mods. Scroll to the bottom of the page, open the folder with your downloaded mod, and just drag and drop the files onto the word choose files. Click upload once you're ready. The length of time it takes to upload depends heavily on your file size and your internet speed. You can see all the mods you selected at the top of the screen once the upload is finished. All that is left is for you to click the home button at the top, scroll down to your activate mods area, check the box next to the mods you want to upload and click activate. You can now see your selected mods in the active mods area. Now just click save and start. Don't forget that you still have to download the new mods to your computer or console. You will be prompted to download the new mods when you try to join the server if your mod is from the official DLC section, which they should be since this is what this tutorial covers. Now let's finish up by talking about where to get additional help. If for some reason this video did not answer your questions, gPortal offers multiple avenues to get assistance. 
Go to gportal.com and log into your account. Click the support menu on the left side of the homepage. At the top, you can find links to their wiki, form, and ticket system. The wiki is a great resource which gives game specific facts. The forum is where you can post your question and let the community try to answer. Lastly, their ticket system is for direct help from a knowledgeable G Portal employee when the wiki and forum options has left your questions unanswered. That's it for now. I would like to thank G Portal for sponsoring this video. Please comment, like, or subscribe if you enjoyed this tutorial. I am live on twitch.tv forward slash that camping guy, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, 6 p.m. to 9 ish Central Time. I look forward to seeing you all when I'm live. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful and amazing day.